गुड इवनिंग स्टूडेंट्स टुडे आई विल डिस्कस एंड द इम्पॉर्टेंट कैनियल बोन विच इज टेम्पोरल बोन दिस बोन इज सिचुएटेड बिटवीन द स्पेनाइड बोन इन फ्रंट एंड ऑक्सीपिटल बोन बिहाइंड एंड इट इज प्रेजेंट ऑन ईच साइड ऑफ द मिड लाइन फॉर्मिंग द बेस ऑफ द स्काल वॉट आर द पार्ट्स ऑफ दिस बोन देर आर मेनली फोर पार्ट्स कॉमर्स पार्ट दिस एक्सपांडेड पार्ट then petro mastoid part this is petrous part and this is mastoid part together called petro mastoid part then tympanic part and styloid process which is broken in this bone i'll show you in another bone first of all come to this squamous part it is having two surfaces one is external surface or called temporal surface and internal surface or called cerebral surface and two borders one is superior border and another one is antero inferior border this one on the external surface there is one crest this one this is called supra mastoid crest this crest and it is a ridge which starts from the root of the zygomatic process this is zygomatic process and it is extending backwards and upwards across the posterior part of the external surface and another line is there or suture is there called squamo mastoid suture this is squamo mastoid suture which represents the line of demarcation between the squamous part and mastoid part and this suture lies about 1.5 cm below and parallel to the supramastoid crest what is the attachment of this supramastoid crest temporal fossa attached along the line of supramastoid crest and the area above this crest is the origin of temporalis muscle here and the area below this crest here is the origin of auricularis posterior muscle so auricular is posterior below the supramastoid crest and temporal is muscle above the supramastoid crest and here is a small depression behind the external acoustic meatus this one it is called the supramedial triangle it is meatus so above this meatus supramedial triangle or macoin triangle and there is a bony projection from the anterior to the supramedial triangle called supramedial spine then what is the importance of this supramedial triangle it is an important landmark surface landmark because it marks the position of the mastoid antrum which is medial to the triangle at a depth of about 1.25 cm in the adult but in the newborn it is about 2 mm from the surface and the depth increases by 1 mm per year until the adult position is reached then come to the internal surface what are the impressions on the internal surface can you see there are so many impressions these depressions elevations and these impressions or depressions for the lodgement of gyri of the temporal lobe of cerebral hemisphere and there are some groups and these groups for the frontal and parietal branches of middle meningeal artery and here is a suture between this squamous part and petrous part called petrosquamosal suture and on the superior border of this squamous part here this margin can you see it is bevelled is a special feature of the superior border this bevelled superior border it articulates with the bevel inferior border of the parietal bone forming the squamosal suture i am showing you here this is the squamous part superior border it articulates with this parietal bone so this part it is beveled inside and the parietal bone also beveled here so that these two bones articulates and the anterior part of the squamous part of temporal bone or anteroinferior border 
it articulates with the greater wing of, wing of the sphenoid. This is the sphenoid bone. And another two important presenting feature of the squamous part is that it is having one process that is called zygomatic process. This one, the zygomatic process, it is having two parts, posterior part and anterior part. In the posterior part here, it is having two surfaces. This is the superior surface, this is inferior surface. On the inferior surface, the anterior and posterior roots of the inferior surface of the posterior part of the zygomatic process, they meet here. And this meeting point is called tubercle of zygoma. And the lateral temporomandibular ligament is attached at this tubercle of zygoma. And the anterior part of this zygomatic process, it is having two surfaces. This is lateral surface and this is medial surface and two border. One is the superior border and one is inferior border. And another important feature of this commerce part is the mandibular fossa. The whole thing is the mandibular fossa, but the anterior part, this part is the formed by the squamous part and posterior part it is formed by the tympanic part. This squamous part is the articular part. Here the head of the mandible or condylar part of the mandible articulates with this mandibular fossa or rather articular part of the mandibular fossa forming a synovial temporomandibular joint. Here you will get one fissure. This fissure, it is in between the squamous part and tympanic part called squamotympanic fissure. But this fissure, it is divided by a projection from the petrous part of the temporal bone within the fissure and divide it into petrotympanic and petroscomodal suture. But the petroscomodal suture from this side it is closed, but the petrotympanic fissure it remains and it communicates the infratemporal fossa below with the middle ear cavity inside and transmits some important structures. Three important structures passes through this petrotympanic fissure and you will remember with the three letters C A A. C for coratimbanic nerve, A for anterior tympanic branch of maxillary artery and another A for anterior ligament of malleus. And the anterior ligament of malleus, it extends from the spine of the sphenoid to the anterior process of malleus. So this ligament passes through this and middle ear is inside the petrous part. So there you will get the anterior process of the malleus. So this ligament, anterior ligament of malleus, it is actually the continuation of this sphenomandibular ligament. So sphenomandibular ligament, it is continued as the anterior ligament of malleus passing through the petrotympanic fissure. These two ligaments, sphenomandibular and anterior ligament of malleus, both are derived from the sheath of the Meckel's cartilage, the cartilage of the first branchial arch. Then come to the mastoid part. The mastoid part, it is having two borders and two surfaces. This is the one superior border and this is posterior border. And this is external surface or lateral surface and internal surface or medial surface. And one foramen is there outside. This foramen is called the mastoid foramen through which one emissary vein pass and it connects the sigmoid sinus inside. Here the sulcus for the sigmoid sinus. So the foramen communicates the sigmoid sinus with the veins outside and that vein is the posterior auricular vein. And one artery may pass through the uh, mastoid foramen that is a dural branch of the occipital artery. Then come to the muscular attachment on the external surface of the mastoid process. Here there are mainly three muscles from Above downwards, one is sternoculomastoid, 
then splenius capitis and long simus capitis. So altogether on the outside of this temporal bone, you will get temporal, temporal is muscle here, auricular is posterior here, sternocleidomastoid on the mastoid process, then splenius capitis and longissimus capitis. And another notch is there on the medial surface of this mastoid process. That notch is called the mastoid notch. Here is the origin of posterior bilia of digastric muscle. And you know the anterior bilia of digastric is attached to the digastric fossa of the base of the mandible. But the posterior belly it is supplied by the facial nerve and anterior bilia of digastric it is supplied by the nerve to myeloid which is a branch from the inferior alveolar branch of mandibular nerve. Then come to the medial surface. On the medial surface of this mastoid part, here there is a deep sulcus and this group, it contains the sigmoid sinus. And mastoid air cells, which are air filled spaces, you will get in the mastoid part of the temporal bone. And one thing to remember that this mastoid process, it is not present at birth. It starts appearing at about first year and it appears at about second year after birth. What is the reason of the appearance of mastered process? This process, it is produced by the pool of the sternocleidomastoid mastered muscle. Here is the attachment of sternocleidomastoid mastered muscle. So the pool of the sternocleidomastoid mastered muscle produces the mastered process when the child holds the head upright. Then what are the articulation of the superior border and posterior border of the mastoid process? The superior border, it articulates with the posterior one third of the lower border of parietal bone. This is parietal bone. Anteriorly, it articulates with the sphenoid, middle with the squamous part of temporal bone and posteriorly, the parietal bone articulates with the superior border. This is the mastoid process, the superior border. The superior border articulates with the posterior one third of the lower border of parietal bone. And its posterior border, here you can see the posterior border articulates with the occipital bone. So here is the occipital bone, squamous part of the occipital bone. 